Hello guys and welcome to Code Blobs TV. Uh, my name is Pedros and today we're going to learn how to efficiently work with Gulp and create a front-end workflow uh, that will make our lives easier. So let's start by uh, installing Gulp uh, globally first. Don't forget the sudo on front if you're on Mac or Linux. And after that's done, go ahead and create a local folder. I will call it Gulp uh, Workflow. And here we need to install Gulp, but this time uh, locally. But before doing that, we need to create a, a package JSON file with npm in it. You can do that and just press enter on all of this. Yes, in the end. And uh, npm install, save, Gulp. One, once that's done, uh, we need to walk and we need to go ahead and install all the packages the dependencies for this project. And we can do this by uh, pasting this line of code. Uh, as you can see, these are the packages that we will need. I will explain everything uh, in detail later. For now, just uh, press enter, write this line of code and press enter. It can take a while, so I will uh, resume the video once uh, that's done. Now that uh, the development dependencies are installed, we can open up uh, with your favorite editor the folder that NPM used to install the packages. You can see the node modules uh, folder here, which uh, includes all the packages installed and their dependencies. And there is this package JSON file. If we open that up, we can see all the packages we installed here in the, under the development dependencies and also for dependencies uh, we, we have Gulp. Now uh, it's time to create our uh, structure of this project and mainly uh, how this goes is you have a source folder which will contain uh, everything before uh, getting processed by Gulp. Then, uh, after getting processed by Gulp, uh, we will set and configure Gulp to put everything inside this folder, which is short for distribution. Now, uh, inside our source uh, folder, we have uh, three more folders. One is images, JavaScript, SAS, and we also have uh, a single HTML file in this uh, case and we can write like that okay so this is a source folder uh, I won't do anything in the distribution folder right now uh, we will work on uh, gulp next and we go from there the first thing we need to do in order to set up gulp is create uh, a file called Gulp file.js. Next, we need to import all packages we have installed in package JSON. And I've gone ahead and created a nice structure and I paste it here. So all we're doing here is just require all the packages that we installed through our package JSON file. And I will still not go too much in detail right now for the packages, but I will explain as we go. So uh, first we need to configure how to handle the CSS uh, for our project. Uh, gulp task CSS, okay. And we create a callback function which returns. First we specify the source of our SAS files in this case. Uh, this asterisk just means that um, search in all directories under the SAS folder, get all um, .scss uh, uh, files, 
and then we pipe, we pass uh, through SAS, which we installed and use here. So we pipe through SAS, which will uh, convert them to CSS, and then we want them to go into the distribution folder. So gulp destination equals distribution CSS folder. And that's the first step. So let's first create a file here. Styles CSS. I don't know, write a body function here um, with a background uh, color of wheat. And then let's go ahead here and write gulp CSS. Okay, using gulp file starting and finishing after 30 milliseconds. Now in our dist folder, we have a CSS folder and under, under that we have a style CSS file. As you can see, this is the, the procedure we're going to follow from here on out. Uh, we will just add more things to the tasks we're going to create. Now, let's go ahead and uh, make this task, this gap task, better. But let's close this down for now. Uh, what if we wanted to minify our CSS files so they take less space? So minifying just means uh, empty, invisible spaces are removed. We can do this by writing uh, here output style compressed and we also want to lock any errors we have so we can write that here error use the sas lock error method okay now if i were to run the same gal process again difference will be that everything will be on one line. So all uh, spaces and invisible uh, characters are removed. And this way we can save some space. Now, uh, let's say you have many SAS files in here. So you have, you can create partials, for example, um, typography. And you want the body and the font family. I don't know. Uh, think Helvetica. New. Sans serif. Okay. Uh, yeah, and we can import it here. Like that. Okay, so what happens is uh, Gulp will go through and process all the files. Of course, because we use import in here, everything would be in one file. So in the end, we will only have style CSS. And then you realize that you forgot where you uh, change, for example, the font family. But when you inspect the browser, you can know from where the file from which partial file that comes from, because everything will be inside this file here, which con will contain our rules. Now, um, so to find out where in your workflow, in which partial uh, has uh, the specific rule that you want to change can be done by using source maps. So here. Now to source map, source maps do is exactly that the source where each rule came from. So it'll make it easy for you to know where uh, to change the CSS rules you want to change. So the first thing we want to do is run pipe and initialize the source maps. That's uh, like the starting point for the source maps to, to start uh, getting written. Um, then just before they go to the destination folder, our CSS, 
uh, we write source maps write and we write inside the CSS folder in the maps folder okay let's test this out here you can see we have a maps folder and here we have the style CSS map as expected okay now um, we are going to do another thing with the CSS task and that is to add prefixes uh, you know the vendor prefixes that you have to use uh, to make CSS work across uh, all the browsers uh, like uh, for example Flexbox you need to write um, vendor prefixes in order to make it work across the browsers and there are many other um, CSS rules that need prefixes luckily we have uh, an auto prefixer package which can do that for us uh, quite easily all we have to do is go here prefixer and this is just an extra thing we want to retain we, we want to do that for the last two versions of our compiled CSS so if I were to go to styles body display flex and I were to on the gap task which it says yeah you can see here that we have uh, vendor prefixes for uh, display flex that's for um, Chrome and Opera if I recall Microsoft and the rest of the browsers okay so next we're going to build a task that will copy over um, the HTML files to the distribution folder So again, we define we want all HTML files inside the source folder to go to distribution folder. Okay, so what the, this will do, we'll copy index HTML and put it here, right here. Okay, so let's run this. Go copy. And we have here our index.html file. Uh, I will leave this here. I will name this part one. And I hope to see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.